happen today. One of the new requirements for candidates coming out of General Conference is the responsibility for boards of ordained ministry to offer an orientation to ministry for all candidates for licensed or ordained ministry. This presentation will provide an overview of the reasons for this recommendation, the goals for the orientation, and resources that are already available and being developed to assist boards as they develop an orientation to ministry for their annual conferences. My name is Meg Lossier, and I'm the Director of Candidacy, Mentoring, and Conference Relations at the General Board of Higher Education and Ministry. I work with district committees and boards as they assess candidates for ministry and in support of clergy and the annual conference through different status and relationship changes. My name is Anita Wood, and I am the Director of Provisional Membership, Deacon Support, and Certification in Specialized Ministries. Meg and I will be leading you through this presentation. The 2008-12 Commission to Study Ministry made several recommendations to the 212 General Conference, and one of them which passed was the requirement for every annual conference to provide this Orientation to Ministry event for all candidates. This event is to be held early in candidacy for all those seeking ordained or licensed ministry and will provide a common experience, a place where those discerning a call can hear clear articulation of the orders of ministry, both elder and deacon, and the licensed ministry of the local pastor. Stories can be shared by a deacon, elder, and local pastor of their own call and the way they live out that call. Those in the discernment process have the opportunity to meet these clergy, ask their questions, and gain understanding of the diversity of ministry as they gain appreciation for each form of ministry and build relationships with others seeking to enter ministry. The vision for this time together is to build collegiality among the various forms of ministry while understanding each other's roles. It is to deepen the knowledge that we are all in this together, and by knowing and appreciating the gifts each one brings, we can be as min in ministry as colleagues. We have seen this become a reality in the annual conference provisional membership residency programs, where we have witnessed the development of collegiality among provisional members. One of the hopes of this orientation is that candidates and local pastors will have the chance early on to also benefit from building relationships with their colleagues in ministry. The opportunity for candidates to learn more about the ministry to which they are called, as well as develop an understanding and appreciation for other types of set-apart ministry, is one goal for the orientation to ministry. Greater understanding of ministry can help build bridges among those serving in different types of ministry and facilitate teamwork as our church is being called to envision ministry in the local church and beyond in new and adaptive ways. After the orientation, candidates should be able to clearly articulate the role of set-apart ministry in the United Methodist Church and how their call to licensed or ordained ministry fits into these different roles. The legislation that was passed provides general guidelines and expectations but boards of ordained ministry are responsible for deciding the best way to implement the orientation in their context. The new legislation is in paragraph 312 in the 2012 discipline. You can read that paragraph in the draft document of the 300 paragraphs that are found on the GBHEM website at gbhem.org slash dom. In summary, the Board of Ordained Ministry is responsible for providing an orientation. 
and it is required for all candidates. It can take place before or after they are certified. The goals that were highlighted on the last slide are a part of the legislation for developing collegiality and a better understanding of set-apart ministry. GBHEM has been charged with providing guidelines for that event. With this presentation, as well as the workshop that will be offered at the BOM Quadrennial Training, we are doing that. Some current resources already available to guide and orientation will be suggested later in this presentation. Please take note of the requirement for completion for local pastors. Before a candidate can receive their first appointment as a local pastor, that person must complete orientation to ministry. In addition to completing certification and other educational requirements as named in the discipline. That addition is found in paragraph 315. The Study of Ministry Commission was very intentional in writing this legislation to provide guidelines, but not to dictate how annual conferences should implement an orientation. Some suggestions about places or times that an orientation can be offered include during candidacy at a candidacy retreat or as a part of a group candidacy mentoring program. It could be offered at the beginning of licensing school or built into the school's curriculum if all candidates in your annual conference are required to attend. Additionally, your annual conference could offer a series of meetings or get-togethers across a few months and in different districts or areas of your conference to meet this need. We encourage you to be creative in responding to the needs of the candidates in your annual conference. Already available that could be helpful in starting this conversation. One of the resources that the General Board of Higher Education and Ministry offers for a discussion of ordained ministry is this DVD. Because the DVD focuses on ordination, the videos included provide an overview of ordained ministry, deacons and elders, and chaplains and pastoral counselors. This DVD is for sale through Cokesbury, all the videos can be viewed on GBHEM's website at gbhem.org slash ordained ministry. The Steps into Ministry and Ministry of flyers provide an overview of licensed and ordained ministry and the ministers of chaplains and pastoral counselors. They can be used to spark discussion and develop an understanding of the different roles of those practicing self-set-apart ministry. They are available in English and Spanish and can be ordered through Cokesbury or downloaded from the GBHEM website. Beyond the Burning Bush, Hearing and Answering God's Call is a collection of different call stories written by a diverse group of people who have answered God's call in many different ways. It's an ideal resource to guide those as they think about their call stories and the many different places from which God calls us. The Christian as Minister provides an overview of ways to serve in the United Methodist Church and ways to understand God's call. It can be read in a small group setting and guide discussion among candidates. The Ministry Inquiry Process and the Candidacy Guidebook also provide discussion topics as candidates explore God's call and help to develop an understanding of the varieties of set-apart ministry. In the Ministry Inquiry Process, I recommend Session 9 for an orientation event or I recommend Section 2 in the Candidacy Guidebook. The Ministry Inquiry Process is available for sale through Cokesbury while the Candidacy Guidebook can be ordered from GBHEM by your annual conference's Candidacy Mentor. William Lawrence's book, Ordained Ministry in the United Methodist Church, provides a history of ordination as it relates to the community of the church, both through the communities of affirmation or confirmation of one's call and how the community helps 
others make decisions about preparation for ministry. For those discerning a call to the order of deacon, I would recommend A Deacon's Heart, written by Margaret Ann Crane and Jack Seymour. These books are both available through Cokesbury. In addition to the resources that are currently available, we want to highlight the new 2013 Book of Ordained Ministry Handbook, which will have a chapter dedicated to the orientation to ministry. We would also encourage you to network with other annual conferences about what kinds of events or gatherings they are offering, as well as the timing it is offered during the candidacy process. The Orientation to Ministry is a new offering in the Church, developed to respond to our need for engaging in adaptive ministry. We look forward to seeing the many different ways that annual conferences implement this. Thank you for your participation in this session. If you have additional questions, our contact information is listed here. And again, thank you for your work and your ministry on behalf of the United Methodist Church.